them to like different ways of getting the ball back. So in these games, if I haven't said that that can't happen, then you, that, then you should be trying some stuff. Like real focus on getting the ball back. Okay. And then in terms of like the behavioral stuff, pulling out the Scots, we want to go after um, creativity. So different ways of doing stuff. Like people should be coming to us around innovation. Who's innovating the game? Scotland. That's who's innovating the game. Coaches, referees, players. That's where innovation lies. And innovation comes from people being afforded opportunities to explore and try some stuff. So let's try some different ways of doing stuff. Okay, and then the other one is just around this self-organizing. This uh, share information so we can coordinate ourselves. So who's, who's gonna call the huddles? You're gonna call the huddles. Uh, we're gonna get into replays. So you're gonna have some opportunities to go. Uh, in this game, we wanna have these moments again, coach. They're gonna call them, not me. I might have to nudge them a little bit and there might be some stuff I see that I might wanna sort of think about it. But that's the kind of stuff we've spoken about. So in terms of the session, we're gonna go because what we're going to talk about this afternoon is just a little bit of session flow. So the first thing on session flow is, is we want to generally come here and muck, muck a boot, as they call it in Scotland. We need to afford opportunities for them to come and have free play. And it's crazy how we have to organise free play, for Christ's sake. But however, like that's kind of the world we're in. So can we organise at the start opportunities for them to muck a boot and have some free play? Um, and you might want to nudge them a bit, but that's generally. And then we're going to get into what we now call Wii Games. So multi-directional, loads and loads of touches. Um, and then we're going to move into sort of clan battles. That's probably where we're going to get to. Clan battles is the tactical stuff. Stuff going on in the game, opposition don't know. They've got to work some stuff out. Loads and loads of problem solving. So that's where we're going to get to around the session design stuff. Over there, there's some like bits of paper with some information on that you might want to pick up and just sort of, it might like give you a little bit more focus on what to be attentive for during the session. So some games that we're going to like like, there's going to be part of what we do all across Scottish rugby, everybody, first team all the way down. Um, and then a little bit around coaching skills. And on the board, then there's a pen next to it, I just want you to write stuff. So write stuff around my coaching skills or the skills of coaching. Write stuff about how this is designed in the, in the floor of the session. And then write stuff you've seen around these Scott skills. The skills that we want to like, get, sort of get out across the whole of Scottish rugby. So uh, anyway, we'll talk about that a little later on. Are we cool with the games? So we're going to play a level one. Remind me of the rules of level one. Or what's happening? Quickly shout out. Hey, two points for a kick pass to score. One for a try. Pardon? And you win if everybody on your team scores before how long? The game is six minutes long. Everybody scores, you win the game. If not, it's the highest score. Do you want to play a small rugby round or big rugby? Which one? I'm thinking round. Round one? You want to play with a round one? Uh, play. Remember how we score the game? Show me how you get the ball back. You can't rip it, but I like you trying. Mason, fist bump for the rip. Can't rip in this game. Show they get you the ball back. Are you guys playing turn and burn? Is anybody going to try and get the ball back? It's six. That's a shoulder contact, that's a turnover, and you get a point. Uh, you can't shoulder contact till he's passed the ball. Great interception. Cool skill. Shoulder contact. That's a turnover. That's not a shoulder. Ollie, what are we doing off the ball, mate? Nice. Ah, and all it there. I've got the score. I want you to go in your groups uh, literally for 10 seconds and I want you to tell me what the score is. If you get within two points, you get an extra two points. What's the score in the game? Right, right there. Um, your team, how many do you think you've got? Seven. Seven, you've got eight, so you're within uh, two, so you get, you get two extra points. How many have you got? Pardon? 
How many? How many do you think? Three. Three, you've got two, you're within two points. You get two points. Awesome. Well done for understanding what the score is. Uh, we've got... You've still got three and a half minutes. Uh, Ollie, you can start this play. Everybody score try. You win the game. Great play, good skills all. That's not a shoulder contact. Play from this ball, play. Shoulder contact gets you the ball back, just saying. It's not a shoulder contact, play on. Oh mate, great skill, magic moment. Love how he kept the ball in. Let's play. Oh, magic moment. Two magic moments. Good shoulder contact. Turnover and a point. Well done. Two and a half minutes left. See if everybody can score. Play on. Got the ball away. Magic moment, mate. What an offload. First person to kick gets an extra point. Surprised nobody's called a timeout. Two minutes to go. Two minutes to go. Ollie, your team's getting beat. Ollie, do you think your team would benefit from like having a catch up? You okay? Oh, mate. That's definitely shoulder contact. That's a great shoulder contact. Um, Gab, has anybody called a timeout in your pitch? Are, are you surprised? Yeah, I'm surprised. Ollie, I'm surprised your team because your team's getting beat quite heavily. I'm surprised you haven't uh, tried to sort, sort it out. Has everybody scored a try yet on that team? No. Who do you think hasn't scored? Ah, uh, Lord, uh, uh, I want you to put your hand up if you think your team would benefit from getting together and solving some problems together. Put your hand up if you think that would be helpful. However, nobody's called a timeout. It's a bit weird. Um, you've allowed 20 seconds, there's a one minute and 10 seconds left. You've allowed 20 seconds to try and solve some problems. Uh, Oli, your team's getting beat by eight points. How do you win the game? Everybody score, Everybody score yeah. I think they're just like running around. Just like running around. Any, any stuff you've noticed, coaches? Yeah, I've noticed that they, uh, to be fair, sometimes you have to nudge them. Like kids just generally want to play. We'll kind of work it out. But if we've only got like an hour session or two one hour session, we might need to nudge them around. Maybe we, maybe we can solve some problems a bit faster. Shoulders on all the time. So my, my view around, um, so you can play touch if you, if you like getting a bad back, that's cool. Um, but I generally think we, we need to like avoid touch. I think we need to play shoulders because uh, that just gets you in a much better and safer position, which much better transfer. I think we're making it quite unsafe for people by, by this non-contact version being touch. Even two hands touch, we can get into some really weird positions that we're never ever, or we're probably not gonna get into. So shoulders, hit, wrap, you can actually be prescriptive about that. This is classic, they're waiting for the coach to start the game. Uh, any chance of starting? Yeah, well done, thank you. Uh, go on, sorry. Yep. 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 Yeah, uh, um, yeah, I would do some differentiation stuff, like maybe have them in three or four different groups. So one group might be, everybody just wear the fox's tail. One group might just be hit and wrap and pull the tail out. Another group might just be like hit and wrap. Um, and then those boys and girls who are a bit more confident might be like full on tackling. Um, occasionally, I think you can like a little bit of confidence. 
Um, generally not. I mean, people don't run around with bag on a pitch. I would generally not use them that much. I think if you've dragged some stuff, as long as it moves, as long as somebody's holding a bag, it moves. My personal view, like, just tell them to bring a pillar so they can just run with a pillar on their side. And crash mats are great. If you can get a few crash mats, get the kids like, like because sometimes it's not the tackle, it's the floor. The ground's quite, especially this time of year, it's quite odd. So they, like, they love a little bit of a crash mat, diving on the crash mat stuff. And get them very confident with the ground, get them rolling. Score try, you must dive. Like, we, we actually avoid kids from diving. Like, let's get them on the floor. Start with the ball on the floor, so they have to dive on the ball. No, so little ways we can start the game. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, yeah, absolutely. So below ball, below ball, it might even be a, yeah, absolutely. But again, you can just mess around with that. You can just, uh, you can just uh, mess around with it. In you come. Did anybody get everybody to score in their team? You had one more player, who was it? Oh, you were close, you were close. Uh, Gav, what about your pitch? Did anybody get anywhere close? So what was the score, Gav? Which team won the game? Ooh! Um, this team, I believe, non-headbands also won. Uh, I, I got chatting, but I'm pretty sure from looking over that you guys won. Headbands, give the non-headbands a round of applause. Well done. Oh, look at the coaches. Look how excited they are. Uh, can you remember what level two was? What's level two? Six minute game. We're only going to score the team that wins is scores the most points. And you must kick in order to score a game. Score a try. Everybody happy with that? Off you go, get playing. If you want a timeout, call it yourself. Guys, uh, coaches, I just asked a, a question around keeping it simple. And um, it, I, I mean, that's an interesting one. So clearly everybody's finding this like really confusing, quite difficult. There might be some over there and there'll be some people who find it really simple. And the players will be on uh, this continuum. My, uh, my observation is often the coaches are up here more than the kids. So the vast majority of kids, this is, it's our perception that this is, this is quite, there's loads going on type stuff. The kids, the kids generally are, yeah, we get this. And ultimately that's what coaching is. Like we're trying to create some, some mess, some disorder, some chaos, because they're responsible of what we want them to do is try and create order. So that's our role. Our job is to create some situations that are like, oh, this is quite confusing because they might have to work together. They might, you might, um, it's, it's their job to kind of sort it out. That's, that's what learning is. Like we're creating order out of disorder. That's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to represent certain things, give them some problems to solve in the game and support them to solve them, coach, coach to solve them. But yeah, it, it, it is definitely important. It's worth as a coach checking in to see like how you're finding this. Oh mate, great information. Magic moment for good communication. <laughs> Shoulder gets the ball back still. Shoulder gets the ball back. Good scales. Great ball movement. How do we get the ball back? Uh, I want you to play with a football, please. And all of that. Anybody who's really confident around there, kick and put your hand up. Probably often people are playing side backs. Anybody here play 9 10? Have we got any 9s or 10s? Anybody who's like pretty confident on your kick and I want you to use your non dominant foot a bit more. Are you happy with that? Ready, let's play. Can you play with a football? This team play with a football, please. Let's go. Just see what the football affords you. Five minute game. Yeah, nice. Well worked out, good girl. Shoulder contact gets the ball back, just a reminder. What are you noticing about your team? They're a bit like, they're trying to press sure too many people at once. Okay, so how would you, how would you change it? Uh, Go, no, just try to slow the game down a bit. Okay. How do you mean slow it down? So like, what would be a good way of slowing it down? Maybe like having each person assigned to like a section okay. of a pitch, like what they do in football. Do you think it would be useful to have a bit of a chat with your team about it? Yeah, probably. Okay, what's your name? Leanne. 
Yes. Leanne's just called a timeout. She just wants to have a catch up. How, how long do you want, Leanne? How many seconds? 30 seconds with Leanne, off you go. Two more minutes of this game. Two minutes of the game. So look, just a couple of things that happened um, before you guys came out. So we sort of checked in a little bit. Obviously around the mission, this is what we want to get out of the session. I kind of sort of said, look, this is the game we're starting at. Uh, we started on a, a level one. What would level two look like? Um, what would level three look like? So I've already got a bank of games, stuff that they're really curious about that they'd want to play. Um, and they've also done a little bit of a sort of, they've paired up at the start just to kind of go, look, based upon this session, this is what I want to get out of it. So in attack, I want to work on this. In defense, I want to work on that. I'm going to give them a couple of times in the session just to check in with their mates about how they're doing on that. Um, because there's a couple of things what players are telling us in terms of what they want from us as coaches. Anybody want to shout out what it is? Well, what do you think the coaches want from us? Uh, sorry, players want from us as coaches? Yeah, feedback, information, instruction, yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely, it is that. So I'd probably chunk that up to individual coaching. They want to feel as though there's been something for them. That's what they want. So they want to leave this and go, wow, that was an amazing team session, but I don't think it had anything for me. So they want individual stuff, so think about how you can do that. And then the other thing, anybody idea what it is? That's the longest 30 seconds ever. Uh, choice, awesome, well done, it's choice. They want to have some like choice. Oh right, that's level one coach, right, we'd want this in level two. And by the way, they said, oh, I wouldn't mind this, and I'm like, oh, I kind of talked them out of it. But I'm not sure that's going to get us that much better, based upon this is what we're going after type stuff so you don't always necessarily have to agree and by the way choices in everything like choices in everything you know choice can be do you want to play this game or this game do you want to play with this ball or this ball do you want to play that way or that way so they've actually only got two options but at least they've got an option the other end of that is which which ball do you want to play with which which game do you want to play with how do we want to adapt these rules but they want choice they don't want you just banging on all the time and tell them what tell them what to do Mate. Turnover, eventually got a shoulder. Ollie, how do you think you could have been more effective with your shoulder there? Say what? Yeah, what, what, what do you think comes before shoulder? Yeah, feet, mate. Got to keep those big feet moving. What size feet you got? Oh, mate, stop it, they're big feet. Ah, and all it there. Guys, we're just going to change the pitch a little bit. We're going to go into clan battles. So before we go in this clan battle, and I'll sort the pitch out, can you get with your partner, who you start with it, and just have a catch up about what you're going after? How's it going for you in attack? How's it going for you in defense? Have a catch up with your partner, please. So just some stuff around, like some stuff we're going after. So self-organizing is what we're going after, like really hard. On pitch, off pitch, so let's stop telling kids where to stand, what to do, all that. Like, of course, we're going to give them some framework. By the way, there's loads of framework in a game anyway. Can't pass forwards, like, you can't take somebody's, like, there's a lot of stuff we can and can't do anyway. So, self organizing is something you want to go really hard at. So, and again, some of this, like, like Gavin's stress, he's like trying to see Gavin's trying to sort out for them. Gavin, just let them sort out themselves. So we just got to let people self-organise in themselves, and sometimes it's a bit messy. Are we cool these teams are fair? Does everybody think they're fair? I'm surprised this team looks the best. Why have you put all the good players in one team? So the game is we're going to play a four-minute game. So we're going to play four minutes, and we're going to play Barbarians. What's Barbarians famous for? The uh, rugby team, by the way, not people who chop your heads off. What's a Barbarians famous for? Different skills. Yeah, yeah, they'll definitely try stuff, be creative. Any particular skill? We notice around the barbarians. Yeah, they do. Yeah, do that. Yeah, lots of creative overhead kicks. I would also suggest like offloading type stuff. So what we're going to play is one shoulder gives you an opportunity to pass the ball within two or three steps. Two shoulders, it's a turnover. Okay, so it's, a, it's really trying to emphasise our, our um, offloading skills. So we're going to play barbarians. In addition to play that game, can you send a captain from each team, please, quickly? Well, awesome. So that's what your team also needs to do. Don't tell the opposition. So you need to go and have a chat. Who's captain? 
Big O. Don't tell the opposition what you're trying to do, and this is what you're trying to do in the game. Don't tell, sorry mate, I've just, oh mate, I did on purpose. I'm trying to build your resilience. You've got 20 seconds. It wouldn't be helpful if you told the opposition. So coaches, so we're going to play a game, everybody knows those rules. And then, and then in attack and defense, they're going after some different stuff. So they're going to try and do some stuff. Um, I think they can hear this, so that this is definitely for them as well. I think they'll put all their focus into their thing and not work out what the opposition are doing. That's what I think will happen. It happens most of the time. Who wants to challenge to start the game? Do you want to challenge? Do you want to pick somebody from the opposition quickly? Who do you want to pick? Oh, this, this big fella. Ready to jump off? Ready, play. It's not a shoulder. It's got to be shoulders. It's not a shoulder. Turnover. Two shoulders. One point for a turnover. One nil. Where's best space, dude? One shoulder. One shoulder. Someone else next? Yeah, two shoulders. Turnover. Good try. Fucking hell. That's not a shoulder. Play on. Create information. What are you doing off the ball, dude? What we're seeing off the ball. Uh, I'm going to give that to non, non headbands. Uh, why do you think I'm giving that to non headbands, that ball? Hey. It was something that was happening out here. The reason I've turned the ball over. What do you think it was? What was happening out here that wasn't that helpful? Yeah, mate, you're just like, just like messing around. Rugby's an off the ball sport. If we're not off the ball, if we're not like doing some cool stuff off the ball, I'm going to turn the ball over. Ready, play. Extra points if you hit the cameraman. Yeah, good try. It's not a shoulder. Yeah, that, I think that's a shoulder eventually. Play. Coaches, what sort of stuff? So I'm thinking we probably got like one too many on here. What sort of role? Uh, uh, how, how would you go about this? So I think uh, I think it'd be a better game if I took off one, maybe two yeah, from each side. If they do a tackle, drop them off. Yeah, so we can definitely play a drop off, just to get a little bit of sort of stuff from the backfield. Pardon? Yeah, if you score, we can swap them around. Yeah, all of that. Love that. Anything else? Yeah, yeah, you could send some off. One shoulder. Oh, mate, good try. Did you deliberately try and push him in the touch? Yeah. Well, you should have. I'm surprised you didn't. One more minute. We'll have one more rotation, then we'll uh, see what's going on. Oh, Megs. Get a point for Megs and somebody. So, so what are you going to do? Uh, knock the ball on. You've got to catch it with one hand if you drop it, it's their ball. Put your hands up if you think you'll drop it. Who thinks you'll drop it with one hand? Oh, mate, there's not a lot of confidence. One hand catch. Play. I'll let you have that. Good skills, mate. Touch one. Yeah, just shift it quick. Two shoulders, turn over. One shoulder. Try there. What do you think they're trying to do? Just giving you some clues, this play. Great footwork. Great support. Great support. That is great support. I'm enjoying that. Ollie, do you think you can work hard in defence? Ollie? Out of 10, how, how hard do you think you're working in defence? Well, like what score? Five. How, how's it going to be a seven, do you think? It's not a shoulder. It's not a shoulder. One shoulder. Great support. Good shoulder, it's not tackling, it's just shoulders. Ollie's having a bit right on. 
Actually, let's just come in. Players, come in. We'll check in with the coaches a little bit. Oli, how do you think it's going to be like a seven in defence? What's the one thing you could do different in defence? Yeah, just effort in it. Just effort a bit. OK, so I, I deliberately didn't tell them the scoring system, yet nobody asked, which is like, so there's two things we really need as coaches like, and players, like we need to be really mindful of. So one is the time. So try as much as we can to give them some information around the time. This is a four minute game. We're going to go for a minute and a half, 15 minute game. We're going to play two halves. Because that, that's really important. That, that transfers massively into the game. So that's a big, it's a big factor in the decisions that you make in terms of the team. So time and then the other one's the score. Like they've kind of got to get the score. They've got to understand how to score and how to win the game type stuff um, for a number of reasons. One is, well, my main reason is from the tactical stuff. We want players to be really good at beat the game stuff, problem solving type stuff. Um, so uh, the scoring system is that if you score try, it's worth one. Kick the score worth two, so the same as last time. Any turnovers worth one, any magic moments worth one. So it's the same point scoring system as the last one. Is everybody cool with that? Yep. Um, and if you do your challenge, you get an extra 10 points. Um, has anybody got any idea what the other challenges are on the other teams? Which, which one do you think you guys know from Greens? Uh, Why do you think it's scoring the corner? I can't believe you shout it's scoring the corner, but I'm enjoying how you give them a clue. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, by the way, we're laughing with you, we're not laughing at you. But like, that's obviously, like, you, you wouldn't play in a game against whoever, so Burramure against whoever, uh, Highland, and go, by the way, this is what we're trying to do. Uh, but uh, by the way, since, since you knew that, what, what have you done about it? Like, what's your strategy to stop them scoring in the corner? We only figured it out when we got sent. All oh, right, so, and, and you haven't had any time to chat over there about it? We have, we have. You have, but you just haven't. Are you going to? Are you going to have a catch up about it? Yes. Yeah, cool. Has anybody called a timeout yet? Yeah. Okay, so in every game you play from now on, you're allowed one timeout, in game timeout. Is everybody cool for that? Right. And the other thing you're allowed in game is two replays. So everybody happy? We spoke about as players. A replay is you're going to have that moment again. And think tactically how you're going to use that. And remember, you've got some stuff going on for you you're trying to do, and you've got to work out the oppositions. Coaches, any, any observations? Any observations about what you've seen? Tax really flat. Tax really flat. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to start to... So I've, I've already done it once. If I think you're off the ball stuff, in attacks, not that, like, if that's not helpful, then the opposition's going to get the ball in. You can just practice your defence. Is everybody cool for that? Yeah. Anything else we've noticed, coaches? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Like, great opportunities to kick, and nobody's kicked. Kick the score now has been elevated to five points. Want to score past five if, you're, if you score. In fact, if you're a low number, so if you wear numbers one to eight normally on the pitch, I'm going to give you seven points. You're going to get extra points to sort of try some kick and to score. So I'll, I'll kick the scores. Everybody cool? One more thing from coaches. Maybe you can influence the game a bit. What have we noticed? Anybody notice anything else? Pardon? Not less. I'm surprised you haven't said, hey, Fletch, any chance of making the pitch bigger? Because I'm like agitated by the size of the pitch. So you got, do you want to play the other way? Put your hand up if you want to play with a wider pitch. Put your hand up, why the pitch? Okay, we'll stay the same. Would, would you want it a little bit wider? Would you want it wider or not? Okay. I need a three-person three line out and I'll throw into you. Let's go, three-person line out. Three-person line out, as soon as you're ready, I'll play. As soon as you go up, I'll throw. Oh my God, just go up, I'll throw it. Play. You're caught. Well, well, you're calling the replay that early. Replay. That's good. They want the moment again. Who, who had the ball? Back to where you were. Three, two, one. Play. Same thing or different thing. It's up to you. Early on the replay call. Thank you. Think about how we score points. How do we win this game? 90 seconds left. Where's best base, dude? Pick, pick up and play. You guys have got to be 10 metres back from the line. Let's play. Let's play. 
We've seen his best space. Two shoulders, turn over, play from that one. Whoever gets it can play. Pass the ball, please. Good ball movement. One shoulder, we're not tackling. Two now, play from this ball. Play. Give me that ball. Play on. One shoulder. Great shoulder contact. You okay? Pass the ball, please. I'm turning the ball over. Why am I turning the ball over? Because we're not working off the ball. Let's play. You can defend. 45 seconds. Where's the best space, mate? Good ball movement. Great tackle. Great shoulder. Great information. <laughs> Try there. Think about what we're trying to do in the game. How do we win this game? Uh, green's on. Whoever's turn it is to be off, off. Just play. Yeah, good movement. Try there. Your team's got to get the ball. They can go whichever way they want. Let's play. One touch. You've got to pass within two metres. No, you've run too far. Turn over. If you don't know the rules, just ask a teammate. Touch one. Coaches, uh, let's give some people some stuff to do. One minute. What are we doing off the ball? He's going to kick the space. <laughs> Language, please. Play on, she got it, there's only one shoulder, she got it away. That's not a shoulder, it's one shoulder. Yeah, great work eventually, two shoulders. Think about how we can get you. Time out, these guys want a time out, well done. I think, I think Gavin's nudged them. 30 second time out, and you've got 45 seconds of the game left. Coaches, what are you noticing in your come? Yeah, they're much better at communicating the lads, aren't they? The lads are too cool for school a bit. Yeah, bit of feedback. It's just shoulders on. Just uh, run up there, please, run up there. So, boom, it's shoulders. Ideally below the ball, on ball, below ball, shoulder wrap. We're not tackling people. Play, where's best space? What are we doing off the ball? Great information. Great information. Good shoulder. Ah, and hold it there. I'm really surprised that you guys don't keep, keep the score more often. So uh, do you just remind me what the scoring system is? How, how many for a kick try is it? It's five. How many of you have a low number? Seven. So it's five and seven. So it's, high, it's higher value. Defense, what happens if we get two, two touches on? You get a turnover and how many points? One. One point. Who thinks it should be more than one point? I think we should up that a bit. Yeah, I think it should be as well. How many do you think? Three. Three. Three points for a double touch. Is everybody cool with that? Yeah. Um, is anybody yet trying to work out what the opposition or how the opposition are trying to win this game? Has anybody got any other stuff that's going on? Yeah, headbands? So, so, so they have to kick the score, do you think? Cool. Uh, well, what about their defense? What stuff are you trying to do? Have you got any idea? Have you been looking at it, thinking about it? Have any chats about it? Okay.
maybe think about it. So each team, same as you or you, one thing in attack, one thing in the defence, they're trying to do to win the game, to be champions. Open top buses outside waiting for you, taking you all around Edinburgh. Um, so okay, all we're going to do now is we're just going to, I'm just going to try and sort of, um, yeah, just to try and create more opportunities for you to sort of get your heads up and make some decision on whether you want to kick or not, or just play with the ball in the sort of front field. Um, you're allowed one offside player. Uh, however, if that player, so say, to you, what's your name again? Rosalia. Rosalia. So say it's uh, Rosalia, and I touch her, two-handed touch, before she gets the ball, as, as when she's trying to find space, she's got to go back onside. Okay, so we can manage this backfield. We can keep people out of the way. Is everybody cool with that? However, if nobody does that and she's in space, the only way we can get it to her is by kicking. Is everybody? And how many points is it if we kick the score? Five or seven, depending on what you are. Is everybody with it? So that's the only change in the game. Three person line out starts the game. Play. One shoulder. Three points now for touch. That's not a shoulder. Oh, great offside player. That is a great vision. Re replay, you should call it replay. He's just called a replay, giving the ball back. Go exactly where you were, go to where you were. Three, two, one, play. Ah, oh, good replay. I think I probably had to nudge you a bit. Let's play. You allowed two replays. Great lift off the floor. Not sure why we're kicking. Good skills. Mate, hey dude. One shoulder. Oh, why did he kick that? What were you thinking? I was thinking the space down. <laughs> okay. We can get it down and there was nothing on. Okay. So we get it down and we can reset. And then just execution. Nice. If you could have done like two things to make it easier for you, what would you have done? Maybe get another piece so we can get set up. Yeah. And, and. <laughs> Oh, yes. oh, stop it with a kick. Great support. Good shoulder. That's two shoulders. We're not tackling. It's just shoulders. This ball play. Okay, give me that one. Think about how we can use our offside player. Replay. Have you called a replay? Wh which one? Where? From the kick. Back to the kick. She's not happy with the kick. Pass the ball to the person who kicked it. Maybe you should give him some information. Three, two, one. Oh, he's made a decision to pass this time. Oh, so she could kick. <laughs> oh, great, mate, great lift off floor. Good miss pass. That's another shoulder. Good, uh, good use of the offside player. No, oh, stop it. Go home and tell your mum and dad that you scored a try at Murrayfield. Put it on Instagram. Two shoulders, I'm surprised you're putting your head down in two touch turnover. This ball play! Pass me that one. Pass the ball, dude. Oh, mate, good try. Oh, stop it. Good dummy. Not a shoulder. Yeah, got him into touch. Great turnover. Going to give you a bonus point for uh, good thinking of getting him into touch. Good, get the ball back. Let's play. We've allowed one person offside. Went forward, this ball's in the air. Play. Play. What are we doing off ball? If you're not ready, I'm going to turn it over. Yes, Adam. Great support. Try there. This team on, one team off, sort it out. Play from this ball, play. Pass the ball, dude. Work it out. Where's best, mate? No, we're not tap tackling. We're not tap tackling, give him the ball back. We're just doing shoulders on, mate. Pass him the ball. Play. Yes, Ryan. Who's who's close to completing their task, their challenge? Any team? 
How many? How many have you done? Oh my God, seriously. How do you think you're going to do it? Good try. <laughs> Get not like that. I think you're giving some good feedback. One shoulder. Yeah, two shoulders. Turn over. Use two. Ollie. Ollie, you can go and be coach for uh, two or three minutes, please. Coach, you can, you, you can go and coach your team. Yeah, what do you think? Play. You can be off the pitch and coach them. Well, why do you think? What are you thinking? Hey? Yeah. So you, you, you're, the, you're the team coach, mate. I want you to have some. When they come off, I want you to uh, coach them. Good try and shoulder. That's not a shoulder. Great movement, good information. Good intercept, mate. That's a good intercept. Yes, Gabby. Yes. Right. Gabby, well done. That's one shoulder. Gabby, you got in a great position to tackle. <laughs> All right, in you come. I'm just conscious of time. How many did you get? One in the end. I'm surprised you weren't getting more. Like, how, uh, how do you think you could have got more? More aggressive. Hey? More aggressive. Guess anything else? Line speed. Line speed. Anything else? I, I, I would have definitely got them with that. I would have just. I would. I would have worn my headband somewhere else. Just uh, put your headband on your uh, next to your sock. Yeah, yeah, but just down next to your sock. Cool. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh, what, what, what's your name, dude? Oh, Lewis. 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 Why we? Why we just had a conversation about how you wear your headband? Because I'm um, less visible if I want to go outside. Okay. So what was one of your challenges? Uh, three intercepts. Three intercepts. How many did he get? And that was last play. I had to sort of nudge you. Like, I think you did your attack one, didn't you? Yeah, I, don't tell us what it is, because maybe some team would guess. And he was, I was like, I was asking him, how do you think you could get some intercepts? And he was like, oh, I could put a bit of line pressure on them. And yeah, yeah. I just said, maybe you could wear your headbands somewhere else. So like, and then you could just go and hang around with the non-headbands. I think they might pass you the ball. So th that'd be a good way of getting, them, getting an intercept, wouldn't it? I've told them now, it's all right, we're pretty much going to sort of, that's a wrap for, uh, for lunch anyway. Uh, um, I want in your groups to have a conversation about what the other teams were trying to do and then what you were doing about it. So just in your teams, just like 45 seconds, have a quick catch up, I'll catch up with the coaches. What did you think the team was, how they were, what were they trying to do in the game? What were you doing about it? Oh, I like how you've split your team, that's pretty... My right, coaches, what sort of stuff did you notice from the big game, other than the, some of the boys who were like, not getting it right with their tackles? You were, you were putting players in and you were allowed to be in a sort of offside position. Yeah. Without the other side knowing. Yeah. Yeah. You said the immunity. Yeah, so I, I, and, and it's a game, so it's called Finn Ball. Um, so Finn Ball, like obviously Finn Russell, he's like an amazing skill around trying to find space with kicking. So I think it's going to be a core cool game within Scotland that we, at times, allow people offside. Why? What's the advantages of having offside players? What's it going to allow people? What are we thinking? Absolutely. So you've now got a, you've now got a decision. Are we going to man the backfield? And by the way, and they didn't do that well. They had an opportunity to put people onside. If you touch them, they've got to go back onside. So we can actually manage this situation. They didn't quite get to that yet, but they will, and they would. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, because that's ultimately what r rugby is. We're playing around with this backfield, sort of, and I would imagine Gregor was talking about this space in between the, with the 50-22, there's, 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 there's a lot of space. So can we play around with this like backfield, front field thing? Can we push people into the backfield? That's why teams kick a lot. There's a number of reasons why they kick. There's a lot of success from kicking, to create more opportunities and to run a pass. And the great teams, that's what they'll do. They'll kind of all, they'll have all three. They'll have all three all the time. Um, so yeah, so we played a little bit of offside touch, get people to get their heads up, get people to drop different kicks in, and when we can start to sort of develop those games. So fin ball is a, like it's a game we need to play. Like we need to develop the kicking. Um, across the board really, we need, need that triple threat. Anything else you noticed before we check in with the players? Absolutely, yeah, again, like, you know, I keep on hearing and absolutely, that's our best chance. We've got to play the game quick. We've got to be really skillful in order to play the game that quick. 
we've got to be really good at problem solving. Like, right, this is a problem we've worked it out, let's go and do something about it. But, and that team will then adapt, and we've got to co-adapt. Adapt, co-adapt, adapt, co-adapt. Like, if we can be the best in the world at that, we've got a really good chance of winning lots of games. So, um, the players are only as good as the problems that we set them. Absolutely, I've seen loads of that. Who, who's better, boys or girls? On, on, girls are much better at supporting, and generally much more, much more aware of share. So they they were much more aware of sharing the ball. Like the boys were sometimes not that. I even seen a couple in two touch turnover go. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like that's kind of what I noticed. And then one or two actually got themselves into some personal stuff, missed some opportunities to pass the ball. It's all decision making. Sometimes, like some players are in positions where it's more difficult to kick, and I get that. However, sometimes I've seen, I could give you literally thousands, like hundreds and hundreds of clips of, actually, I don't think the person's even thinking about it, never mind, like, go, go on and do it. And it's not just about kick, let's not over edge that. It's, it's also, you know, they run past stuff. Triple threat, every player to be triple threat. So Haggis is just basically like, we get the kids to shout out Haggis X number of times if it's somebody's holding one hand. So if you've got these serial one-hand holders and it's not, that, it's not that helpful, then actually if the opposition, so get them to notice it. So if you're holding one hand, I notice I go haggis three times, four times, once, twice, whatever it may be, it's a turnover. So, um, so yeah, that would be a, so where, so where I coach, like you, you will hear the kids shouting haggis, 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 turnover, to get people to get it back into two hands. However, being able to carry, m manipulate the ball in one hand is also a really important skill. But if you want to emphasise that, do you guess what they were trying to do and what were you doing about it? So, the, so kick, kick the score. Was that true? So, well, what was your challenge? Three kick the score. So, wasn't that simple? How many did you get? How many times did you score from a kick? Once. 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 Of course. However, I did see you trying it, and I think if you had more time at it and we had some opportunities to play for a bit longer, maybe, and by the way, this is just like half an hour. Next Thursday, next Tuesday, next Thursday, next month, next year. Like, I think you'd be really skillful at it. Being able to, like, find ways to kick the score. Awesome. What did you do about it? Did you, did you, be honest, did you deliberately go, hey, they're kicking, boom, boom. Is that what happened? Yeah. Girls, is that what happened? You're less likely to tell tips and boys. <laughs> if it did, or did you know about it? So it might have happened, but they might not have told you. You knew about it. <laughs> but, but, so you told somebody. However, there's people in your team that didn't know your strategy. Like, you, they didn't know your plan. Okay, come on, can you so this? Uh, what were they, what else were they trying to do? What were they trying to do in defense? What did you notice about their defense? No, that's good feedback for your defense. What were you trying to do in defense to win the game? Pardon? Either get the ball, catch it or gather it in the backfield. So what was your strategies around that? How were you trying to do it? So you actually played somebody in fullback. What happens if your fullback kept on shouting, kick it, kick it, kick it? You'd be amazed, even in like top level. If you show kicking to somebody, sometimes they do kick it. So I've definitely seen that before. Were you aware that they were trying to sort of catch the ball in the backfield? Anybody aware of that? Okay, cool. Uh, what, about, what about this team? What, uh, what were they trying to do, do you think? Uh, they were trying to do like a pullback type thing. They're trying to do a pullback? Yeah. How do you mean a pullback? What's a pull? I think they had to kick off restart or turnover. So, so you had to kick off restart or turnover. Was that the case? No, they just did it. Uh, what, what was yours? Say again? You had to score off a scissors or a loop. And you had to do that X number of times. What about defense? What were you trying to do in defense? And how many did you get? How many times did you get people into touch? So you, so you did one. Were you aware that's what they're trying to do? If you had a team that defended like that, what, what, what would stuff that you'd be thinking about in attack? If you had a team that's trying to push you to the edge and get you in a touch, what would you do in a game? Inside passes. Inside passes. Anything else? Play, play up the middle a bit more. Anything else? Maybe when you get the edge, maybe just kick and mind them a bit. Okay, that's cool. What about you guys? What do you think these were trying to do? They were trying to score in the corners. <laughs> oh, anyway, because they shouted, they big Ollie score in the corner. What were they trying to do in defence? Uh, 
just, no, that was just Ollie who was trying to whack you, basically. That was you and Ollie having a bit of a wacky thing. What were you trying to do in defence? Eh? Interception, that's right, we, we spoke about that, didn't we? God, we even chatted about it. Um, I, I, players, like, how often would you do that stuff in training where you have some problems to solve and you've got to work it out and that type of stuff? Is that something that's reasonably common? Girls, yeah, a bit more. Boys, not, not as much, maybe. Okay. It's definitely something we, we, like, we want to go after, this clan bat battle type mindset. Basically, it's tactical coaching. So, yes, we have a game and everybody kind of understands the game, that's, that's normal. But we've got to have some stuff that's going on that ideally you guys come up with. This is how we want to score, you know, based upon whatever we're working on or, or the opposition we're against. Both sides of the ball as well, always both sides of the ball. And more importantly, so we've got some focus on what we're trying to do, but we've also, also got as much focus on like how we're trying to stop the opposition tactically. And then ideally when you'll get really good at it, and they will get good at it really, really quickly, uh, is that like you'll just keep on going, right? They've worked that out, let's go and do something else. Can they work that out, right? They've worked that out, let's go and do something else. Because that's ultimately what our sport is. Like, that's what our sport is. And uh, we, we, I think we can like give it a bit more thought to how we're going to coach that. So, just to recap a little bit, like, that's the stuff we were going after. Players play the best space, uh, different ways of getting ball back. Well, somebody who picked somebody up and put them into touch, somebody ripped it. A uh, little bit of intercepts. I don't think you were that strong on the intercept stuff. And then definitely the creativity. Um, that was probably stronger than your self-organisational skills. Like, I do think you generally were trying stuff. Real good mindset and a real good uh, attitude towards sort of trying stuff. Um, when did he have opportunities to self-organise in the session? Do you think? Hey? Huddles, yeah. They, when you were off a bit. Anything else? In here, just having a catch up. Yeah, um, maybe a little bit about your one-to-ones, maybe about a little bit around picking teams, all of that sort of stuff. So I know it's our nature as coaches that we've got this, so some of us have got this sort of view, like it kind of look, needs to look a bit neat and tidy and I've got a bit of a, but like we need to afford them opportunities for them to be working it out and sorting it out. Remember choice, like keep on checking in with them. Do you want to, I was really surprised you didn't want to play that way. Like, it'd be cool to score a try down there. You wanted to do, they didn't. Oh, mate, you need to get stuck into them. However, um, players, awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Coaches are going to give you a round of applause. It's going to be like weird, isn't it? Yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> awesome. Come on, coaches, anything else you're curious about? Uh, actually, some questions I'll ask. Why do you think we play with lots of different balls? Yeah, handling says so it's just what it affords you. It affords you different things. Small ball, I've got to focus a little bit more. Uh, some real in interesting um, thing is like maybe you're playing a game and let's say somebody does go on the floor, you might want to give them a smaller ball. Next time it goes on the floor, give them an even smaller ball. End up with like a tennis ball because it really focuses them in. You'll see them like go super like hands up. So think about, but generally think about the ball. I didn't play with the flat ball. So I actually like playing with a flat ball because you definitely got to like you got to find the sweet spot when you kick it, and you've got to you've got to get your leg through through the ball. But just think, I play with bean bags, I play with all sorts of things because it just allows you different things, and and, and you don't even need to check in with them. Sometimes you need to go like I'm, I'm surprised we're like how do you think we can play with a bean bag that's different with this ball? So you might need to sort of check in with them a little bit about that. Uh, my view is uh, if we were really brave in Scottish rugby, like I think we would consider the ball a bit more. Uh, women's game and the men's game. Like, it's quite an important thing. Like, maybe we can be a bit more creative with not only training, but also in matches. I'm a big believer in a round ball. When they're little, it affords them real good passing skills. Like, you have to get wrist behind the ball. You have to be able to push. Uh, there's no real advantage from spinning it. Uh, so I, I do a high percentage of my training in all levels, all levels, with uh, football size three football, because I think it, be, it makes you be more skillful. You're probably more likely to try stuff, it's easier, it's dexterous, and you're more likely to kick it, because it's a football. So uh, maybe just sort of think about that, size three, size two football's a class. But yeah, just different, different shapes and sizes and weights will just afford you different things. Um, and that again is tactical. The players are kind of like, just kind of working it out though. If you play with a, um, a beanbag, they'll sort of naturally just get closer because it's like they've got to really focus on. So really good for support play. I would imagine the French play with beanbag because their support play is incredible. It's, in, it's incredible how they look to support ball. 
Um, anything else you noticed? I'm going to take this off. Um, what else did we sort of... Yeah, I, I do think it's important that A, they know the mission or the purpose of the session most of the time. Sometimes I would, I would get them to guess, like 10 minutes in. What do you think we're trying to get out of this session? Oh, I think it's this and this. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely one of those. Anything else? But, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's why again within, and, and I know we've got this, like we, we are going to have a number of core games that we want, people are like, come on, let's go and play these, and you guys adapt them and make them better, so Bannockburn, we've got like awesome games, um, Finball, um, so we've got lots of games, so basically you can go, it wouldn't be great if everybody in Scotland at every level just knew what the games were, so you could say, right, we're just playing Bannockburn, like, okay, so you don't have to damn explain the game. Yep. Next week, next Tuesday, we're filming them all. Absolutely. Absolutely. So to have some core games um, within Scottish Rugby, and then you, you might actually want to take them and go, well, these are our club games. Like, we like that, that, but we're actually going to add some other games. Because we spend far too much time explaining the, the rules. and all, Right, we're playing this game, and then we can start supporting the individuals, which I didn't do a huge amount of. I did a lot of sort of group stuff. So how can we then support the individuals a little bit? And then get into this clan battle. Like, we need people to not know stuff, so they have to work it out. Like, just think of your own experience. My experience as a player was, and I was, like, I was in some great environment, but generally I knew everything. I knew all the rules, I knew what people were trying to do. I just knew everything. I didn't, it wasn't a high level of problem solving. It's definitely something that I would go to if, if I ever hear from a coach, my team don't communicate, they're not very good at communicating. I'm often thinking, well, there's probably enough, there's nothing for them to communicate about. Like, they don't have to solve anything. So there's no need for them to talk to each other. A um, couple of things, and we mentioned in the session, keep the score, buy some clickers, like, they're only a quid. So, so like, keep score, and definitely more often than not, like, around this time, ensure they know what the time is. Because uh, we want competitiveness, and we want this, because it'll give you that, like, lots of stuff it'll give you, but definitely give you that tactical stuff, trying to work out and win the game. Um, and then if you want consequences around it, not punishment, not punishment, then just get them to come up with what the consequences are. Like, what's something that's meaningful for you as a group, that if you don't, like, win this game or do well in the game, like, that's the, they're the consequences around it. So there is something on the line a little bit. Like, we just do things like piggyback off the pitch, last in the hot, hot dog uh, club, have to buy the other one, like, a Costa coffee, because we're pretty middle class where I live. Um, you know, all of that, so, all, all of that so, sort of stuff. Have to, have to send out an Instagram post. You know, just like fun stuff. Not, nothing that's going to shame anybody or it's going to be a physical punishment. But to me, there should be something on the line. Like some, they should be playing for stuff pretty much all the time. Come on, eh? Yeah, no, yeah, not cash, not, not cash, not cash. And by the way, I'm not, I'm not bothered what the score is, but I definitely want people who are, like, are trying to beat the game. They're trying, they're trying to beat the game. Yeah, I think it's really useful as a, as a coaching team to kind of go, right, I'm going to lead on this, and well, what does lead mean? And then co-coaching, like, what are you going to co-coach? Give yourself some give yourself some focus. Like, I'm going to attend to this type stuff. So often there's more than one coach, and often I don't think we're, like, we're co-coaching that well. So to give each other specific roles at this part of the session is really, really helpful. What we do um, in one of our clubs is that one of the best things we do is we just split the players up. So I'm actually, my responsibility is to check in with these five players. So, because we've got hundreds of coaches, so I just, I'm hanging around with the five players all the time and trying to look to support them so they get loads of individual stuff or have an opportunity to get individual. I think sometimes we can drop players out a little bit, not for long periods of time, but just actually give them a coach's eye. Look, I want you to come out and I want you to, and, but give them some direction. I want you to notice this and then I want you to go and help your team. I think that's actually something that uh, I'm getting quite a lot of joy at. Now, they don't like coming off the pitch, but it's definitely helpful. Yeah. Oh, Christ, we're, like, we're not very good off the ball or we're not holding the weight, though. I've noticed this about this player. Just get that an opportunity to have that coach's eye, go and back and influence the game, and then bang and crack on, and then give some other people that opportunity. That player coach type mentality and those skills. The only other thing I would say with huddles, I think players should call them. Uh, most of the time, but I think we need to support them to be more skillful in, in a huddle. Like, what's the purpose of a huddle? It's to problem solve. 
So can we have some stuff that we agreed that what we're going to do, like one person chairs it, we're actually going to leave with two points, maybe like one either side of the ball, um, whatever it may be, whatever it may be. But if, if like problem solving, and it is a part of our game, our game is stop start, we have opportunities to solve problems, then can we give them some scaffolding around like the skills to do that? And I didn't do that, but the team I do do with, they're pretty skillful at it. Like they're 13, they're really skillful. Like they were right, I'm going to chair this. Any questions, bang, 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 right. This is the two things we're working on, off we go. And I would often see transfer. I would often see that transfer into the game. That's all idea of a huddle. Have a conversation, be better.